Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Raul Villanueva. I'm the new entomologist here in this uh, uh, in Princeton. I'm replacing Doug Johnson. I think he was working here for a long time. And today, uh, I'm going to do a very brief presentation on identification of uh, steam bugs present in soybeans. And with me is uh, Hannah Peng. She's uh, finishing her PhD program in Lansington, and she worked here previously. And she's going to give you a presentation on the border management using neonicotinoids on soybeans. So today I'm going to show you some differences of the brown marmorated steam bug and some other uh, steam bugs that are present on soybeans. I will pass this for you, and then you can also uh, use uh, these uh, magnification lenses. I recommend it, especially to some of the consultants, to buy this kind of uh, lenses. These are handy, they are not expensive, and they are easy to, to use. So uh, my program, very briefly, is interested in work with invasive species. And uh, as the world is progressing, we have many invasive species that are coming to the USA, and we are exporting some of them. So for example, we exported the sugar cane aphid to Mexico. It appears first to the in the USA, and then now it's causing havoc in Mexico. But besides that, we have, for example, the kutsu bug and the old world bollworm. Kutsu bug is something that I'm interested in. It's progressing, it's movement from the eastern Kentucky to the uh, western part. I, find, I found uh, two or three new counties um, very close to the border that are having uh, uh, populations of the kutsu bugs. This one, the old world bollworm, is a uh, caterpillar that is originally from Asia. The big issue with this insect is that it affects many vegetables, many field crops, and very easily develop resist resistance to GMOs. So that's very important. And the deal is also that it was found in Florida. So it's going to be moving soon. So the brown marmorated steam bug is an insect that uh, was found in Pennsylvania in 1998. It's originally from Asia, and it, foods, it feeds in many fruits and vegetables. Recently, uh, we were awarded a, a grant to work with this insect, and uh, we are going to work in this area in soybeans, because it affects soybeans. Um, also, we have a parasitoid that was uh, found uh, that was imported by the USA, but now it was found in the wild, so it's causing good effects on, on the reduction of population of the, of the uh, brown marmorated steam bug. You can see here the immature forms of the, of the, oof, this stuff does, of the brown marmorated steam bug. It has the shape of a, a tick, it's tick-like. And the two characteristics that are important for this insect is the band, the white band in the terminal ends of the antennas, and also the black and white banding on, uh, on the abdominal surface. So this is some characteristics that can be easily seen using a microscope. But if you are in the field, that's really hard, and you are going to see uh, those samples that are really difficult. Now, we have a couple of uh, bugs that are present in, in, in soybeans. We have the, run, the rough stink bug, very similar. And, uh, um, but the difference between the, this one and the brown marmorated stink bug is that in the face, the rough stink bug has a tooth face, and also the edges on the shoulder are different compared to the smooth shoulder of the brown marmorated stink bug. Also, we have here a very interesting insect. This is the spine point soldier bug. In this case, this is not a pest. This is a natural enemy, but can be similar, can be misidentified. So it has pointed shoulders compared to the brown marmorated steam bug. Uh, 
We also have the brown steam bug. This is more easily compared to identified compared to the brown marmorated steam bug because when you turn around and we have some of those samples there, the abdominal color is green. And also we have another one, the dusky steam bug. In this case, there are very similar many similarities with the brown marmorated. It has kind of white patches here, but when you turn around the abdomen, it has it has a it has a and uh, the, the brown marmorated steam bug has an extra abdominal segment. Besides that, I mean, they're tinier compared to the brown marmorated steam bug. So now I'm going to pass this to, to Hannah. Uh, so first, I'm going to talk about some of the research that I've been doing for the last three years, thanks to some of you. So this has actually been research done in grower fields, um, particularly many of those belonging to Jim Wade. So thank you very much. Um, and I really want to talk about kind of how we can manage land directly around your fields to promote or reduce certain pests. And so I guess primarily the take home message here is there's not one fix for all pest species. So you can't just change the way you manage the borders around your field once and everything's fixed. Obviously if that was the case we would have figured that out long ago and everything would be fine. Um, so what I did was I looked at 23 fields in central and western Kentucky sampled all these pests, and then looked at how they were related. And so you can see, you know, aphids are negatively related to weeds. You know, so this is on your handout sheet. So if you want to refer to this later, that would be a good thing. And so another thing to keep in mind is that some of these things are actually in opposition to each other. So if you want to, you know, protect against Japanese beetles, then maybe, you know, working with aphid protection is going to be in your favor but not so much with grasshoppers. Um, so you need to consider, well, for one, you might not want to manage your borders any differently. If you don't have any problems with insect pests in your soybean fields, I wouldn't worry about this too much. But if you're already going to be removing a border or changing how you manage a field border, this would be an important thing to consider. So I have talked to some people before that maybe wanted to take out a tree line, which if you have a stink bug problem would be beneficial, but maybe if you have some of these other insect pests would not be so much. So does anyone have any questions? Can I take questions on this? Okay. So then I'll move to the second part. And this was a fast study that we did last summer in Lexington. Um, so for the last few years, a lot of entomologists have kind of been going back and forth about the value of neonicotinoid seed treatments on your soybeans. Um, and so this is, you know, seed coating that gets drawn up into the plant, and then when the insects eat the plant, then potentially they die because they're ingesting this poison. So there's been a recent study by the EPA that said in the Midwest that these things are not super effective. However, there was a competing study in the southeast that said that these were very effective. However, none of those actually covered Kentucky soybeans. So I wanted to look at what this was actually doing in our soybeans here. And again, this is Lexington, so maybe what's happening out here around Princeton is a little bit different than what's happening in north central Kentucky. And so we looked at uh, three metrics. First, we looked at how this is actually impacting our good insects in the field. So we want to see, you know, there's a lot of worry about how neonicotinoids are impacting bees and other things. So we want to see how this is going to impact the predators that are naturally eating your pests. So we put out some sentinel egg masses of cutworms and we saw how many were left over based on the treatment. And good news is we found no difference. So the neonicotinoids were not actually killing the beneficial insects. So that's good news. However, we didn't actually see a difference in the yield at the end of the season. But this could be due potentially to the fact that we actually didn't see a difference in the number of pests that we had of any specific pest, including those that the neonicotinoids are supposed to target. So one caveat here is we actually didn't have large pest numbers of the things that neonicotinoids target. So bean leaf beetle, uh, three cornered alfalfa leaf hopper, and we didn't get soybean aphids until late into the season. So our plants were not very vulnerable by the time our pests showed up. So if you have these insect pests early in the season, this might be a good thing to consider. But if you don't have them until later, maybe it's not worth your time. Um, so again, this is something to remember. This is kind of based out of north central Kentucky. So maybe depending on your pest species, and this is where scouting is important, this may or may not apply to you. <coughs> 